Testing one, two, three.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. We have come here rejoicing into the house of the Lord for this celebration, dear brothers and sisters. And now we stand with Mark and Christine on the day that they intend to form a home of their own. For them, this is a moment of unique importance. So let us support them with our affection, with our friendship, and with our prayer as their brothers and sisters. Let us listen attentively with them to the word that God speaks to us today. Then, with Holy Church, let us humbly pray to God the Father, through Christ our Lord, for this, his couple, his servants, that he lovingly accept them, bless them, and make them always one. Let us pray. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness, pour out your grace on these your servants, Mark and Christine, that coming together before your altar, they may be confirmed in love for one another, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we invite Pastor Dave for our first reading. Reading from the book of Sirach. Blessed the husband of a good wife. Twice lengthened are his days. A worthy wife brings joy to her husband. Peaceful and full is his life. A good wife is a generous gift, bestowed upon him who fears the Lord. Be rich or poor, his heart is content and a smile is ever on his face. A gracious wife delights her husband. Her thoughtfulness puts flesh on his bones. A gift from the Lord is her governed speech, and her firm virtue is of surpassing worth. Choicest of blessings is a modest wife, priceless her chaste soul. A holy and decent woman adds grace upon grace. Indeed, no price is worthy of her temperate soul. Like the sun rising in the Lord's heaven, the beauty of a virtuous wife is the radiance of her home. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
invite Susan to come forth for the second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in, in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries, and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it is not jealous, it is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude. It does not seek its own interest. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoings, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine without knowing where it came from, although the servants who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called to the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves good wine first. And then when people have drunk freely, an inferior one, but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs in Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Many years ago, I was teaching a religious education class for 7th and 8th graders, and we were talking about the sacrament of matrimony. So I invited in a couple who had been married for over 50 years in the parish to come and give a presentation to the kids. And they gave this wonderful presentation. And at the end, they opened it up to any questions. And one particularly precocious 12-year-old boy raised his hand and said, I got a question. Did you ever think about splitting up? It got kind of awkward, you know, as they're kind of looking at each other, looking at each other. And finally, the woman says, well, yes, there have been days. And the man looks at her with surprise and says, Really? You too? 
The reality is that marriage is fantastically difficult because marriage puts two persons, both of whom are imperfect and flawed, together for life. And really, it is, on a human level, impossible. But the good news is that there's nothing impossible with God. And that's why we come here to the church and not to a courthouse or not to someone's backyard, but ultimately to to invite Christ to be the center of this marriage. Because marriage really is not merely a natural reality. Through Christ, he has now elevated it to a supernatural reality. It's one of our sacraments, and a sacrament is an avenue of grace. A sacrament means that God is going to be present there and that God is going to use this as a means to sanctify the couple. And so Mark and Christine will have every day an opportunity to invite Christ to be more the center of their marriage and to conform their marriage more to Christ. Because as we hear in today's beautiful second reading, this great uh, panegyric to love, but what is the greatest act of love in human history? We see it right here in every church. It is the cross, the crucifix. And when we look upon that, we look upon what it means to love. When we put that in very practical terms in marriage, it means that in every marriage, Mark is going to be called to lay down his life for Christine. He's going to be called to wake up every single day and say, how can I serve my bride? How can I find ways to bless her? How can I find ways to help her flourish? And likewise, in the same way, Christine will have that very same challenge. How can I lay down my life in imitation of Jesus Christ for my husband? Because you see, unlike unlike what the world says marriage is, Christians believe that marriage is not solely just for the happiness of the couple. Now, I certainly hope your marriage is extremely happy. But even though there's going to be difficulties in your marriage, your marriage can and should make you holy. So more than mere happiness, marriage has a sanctifying power. Because when we put these two people together and they're forced to love in a sacrificial manner, then they become more like Christ. Then their own vices and selfishness are wiped away because they have to overcome them in order to love this person that God has entrusted to them as their ultimate mission to love and sacrifice for. And of course, since marriage has a supernatural basis, now that it has been elevated by Christ to a sacrament, it also has a supernatural end. And so the purpose of marriage is not merely to live out the rest of your days in marital bliss, but ultimately to help you to get your spouse to heaven, to do everything possible by prayer, by sacrifice, by the witness of your own living out your baptismal call, you have the opportunity to lead your spouse closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because as much as you love each other, you must never forget that God's love for you is far more infinite And the deep yearning that you have in your heart to be loved can never be fully satisfied by your spouse. Only Christ alone fulfills the deep yearning in our heart for love. And so once we have Christ's love dwelling in our hearts, then we can go to our spouse to give and not to get. And that's ultimately what love is. Love is self-giving, not seeking for our own benefit from our spouse. Now, it is my hope That in 50 years, well, maybe 30 years, in 30 years, we'll gather again in this church (laughs) and you can renew your vows. And on that day, you may say, yeah, there have been days that were tough. There have been seasons that were challenging. There may have even been the thought crossing my mind, is this even worth it? But hopefully on that day, you'll be able to say to each other, with God's grace, we made it. With God's strength, we persevered. With God in the midst of our marriage, Our marriage has become something holy. Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church, so that in the presence of the church's minister and this community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses this love, and through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated in holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of the church, 
I ask you to state your intentions. Mark and Christine, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? I have. I am. Are you prepared, as you follow the path of marriage, to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? I am. I am. Since it is your intention to enter into the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. Mark, please repeat after me. I, Mark, take you, Christine, to be my wife. I, Mark, take you, Christine, to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you. To love you and to honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. I, Christine, take you, Mark, to be my husband. I, Christine, take you, Mark, to be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you. To love you and honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. May the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God who joined together our first parents in paradise, strengthen and bless in Christ the consent you have declared before the church, so that what God joins together, no one may put asunder. May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of your love and fidelity. Christine, receive this ring. Repeat it after me. Repeat after me. Christine, Christine, receive this ring. Christine, receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Mark, receive this ring. Mark, receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the and of the Holy Spirit. Let us all now stand for the universal prayer. For Christine and Mark, newly joined in holy matrimony, that God will bless abundantly their covenant as he chose to sanctify marriage at Cana in Galilee. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That Christine and Mark be granted perfect and fruitful love and that they will always bear faithful witness to the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For their relatives and friends, for all who have assisted this couple for all families throughout the world, and for the lasting peace among all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the grace of the sacrament will be renewed by the Holy Spirit. In all married persons here present, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all members of our families who have passed from this world into eternity, especially Charles Nicholson, George and Emma Cherry, Charlie and Lena Mills, Lucia and Pasquale Riccio, and Cecilia and Frank Farino. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, we pray in the words that Jesus himself gave us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will, will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now let us humbly invoke God's blessing upon this bride and groom, that in his kindness he may favor with his help those on whom he has bestowed the sacrament of matrimony.
O God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his church. O God, by whom woman is joined to man and the companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with the one blessing not forfeited by original sin nor washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these your servants joined together in marriage who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit and pour your love into their hearts that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter Christine, and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband entrust his heart to her, so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, may these your servants hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments made one in the flesh. May they be blameless in all they do, and with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all, and grant that reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope, they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We now invite Mark and Christine to consecrate their wedding to our Blessed Mother.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the Eternal Father, keep you of one heart in love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home, we pray. Amen. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone, we pray. Amen. Amen. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity, so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God, we pray. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, all of you who are gathered here, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.